Hello, Happy New Year. Welcome to Successful Trading. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate ATR in Excel in less than five minutes. By the end of the tutorial, you will not only be able to understand the differences between ATR7, ATR14, ATR50, but also the different nuances on how ATR will be able to improve your trading in 2022 and beyond. All of these details, you can find them in the article on our blog title, How to Calculate ATR in Excel. So without any further ado, let us go ahead and dive in. There are very simple steps that we describe in this tutorial on how to calculate ATR in Excel. So what we want to be able to, 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 to do at the end will be something like this. So step by step, I said we can do it in five minutes. So let, let, let's get going. So the first step, step number one in how to calculate ATR in Excel is to, to be able to get the data. The data that you need is the daily price. And there are two um, daily price that, that you need, which is the high of the day, the low of the day. Yeah. So for me, where do I get that? So step number one, you go to Yahoo Finance. You can get it to Google Finance or whatever. But for me, you, I'm very familiar with Yahoo Finance to do that. So I, you here in Yahoo Finance, you tap the ticker. So my ticker that I'm choosing here is QQQ. You know why I like QQQ. If you don't, I'm going to post a video here to get you uh, to, to understand the importance of QQQ for over the, over the last year here. So I will put that video here at this specific space here. So now QQQ here. I want to get historical data and you can go as far back as uh, Yahoo Finance will allow you. So for me here, I'm really just going to take a couple of years, right? So I'm going to here, you click here on the time period to select your date. So I can go, let's say, uh, January the 2nd, January the 2nd, 2019 or 2020. Actually, let's go 2020 and all the way to the most recent data here. So I say done. And in this case, um, the frequency is daily. So this is important because we can calculate ATR over different time frame. We talked about this detail in article, but here I'm looking at daily. So I'm going to say apply. Yeah. And when I say apply, my, my, my most recent date here is January 7. So, uh, that's the most recent. And then I say download, uh, this process, uh, by itself, I don't know, maybe it's going to take 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Uh, so while he's doing that, I can then uh, continue to tell you that. Okay, it, it's done here. So let me open this file. And we are going to open this file. We are currently at two minutes something. I spent this first minute introducing ourselves and my, 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 uh, the video and everything else. So um, Excel, it's uh, taking its time uh, to open this. So I'm just waiting here for it to, 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 to do that. Okay, so the Excel has downloaded the data. You can see here saying QQQ5 because uh, the way Yahoo Finance does it, my computer does it. I've done this many, many times before. So this is the data that we want, right? So with the data here, open low high. Let me just make uh, the font a little bit um, bigger for, for, for you on here. Uh, actually, let me do that all, all at once. So I want bigger font on here just for, for the sake of it. So that's step number one. You got your data. So we are going to call this whatever QQQ uh, ATR calculation. Yeah. So ex excellent. So then uh, in, in the document say, okay, you add a brand new column. We are going to add a brand new column. We are going to call it daily range. Yes. That here's a brand new column that I'm going to create here. I'm going to give you the calculation for that. Uh, you, 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 you bet. So then here the all, so let's go step by step. So this daily range is the difference between the high of the day and the low of the day, because by definition, that's what the true range is. So here in Excel, I will say then just precision. Uh, maybe I don't need three. I, that's two, two, two decimal is good. So I just double click here. Yeah, for those who are not well versed in Excel, very quickly, uh, I have all of my very my daily range, meaning the distance between how many dollars has the stock traded between the high and the low of the day. That that's all you need, my friend. This is it because now we are ready for the for the next step. Now here I can calculate ATR uh, using. A seven day average. Yes, the ATRs, you, if you don't know by now, you can use seven days, 14 days, or you can even do them on a weekly or, or whatever. So here we are going to do, and then we explain in the document the difference between ATR seven, ATR 14, and sometimes ATR 50, whatever ATR that you want. Most, we will not calculate ATR 50 on here, but you will get the gist of it. So ATR seven meaning we are going to take the average of this daily range 
over seven days. So meaning the earliest that I can do on here, I need to feed this thing seven days at least, right? So the first seven days, they are here. I mean, this is nine, this is seven. So these first seven days, if I put them in a, so this is it here. So on, on here, on this day, then I'm going to say, hey, average all of these numbers for me. So to give me my first data point of my ATR. So meaning over these seven days, the ATR, the average ATR, the average show range is $2.2. These, these are in dollars, right? These price here, they're in dollars. In 2020, uh, QQQ was trading at 216. Uh, you see the lows on every day. So th this is it here. So from that point on, it's just for, 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 for the quick of this. This is how you, for, you, you, you want to be well versed in, in Excel. So now you're going to say for the second point, the same is just a sliding window, right? You're going to say, now I'm averaging from this point by giving this new point here. Yeah, that, that's it. Okay, so 219. Okay, not that much variation there. Then now, this is the beauty of it. I'm going to tell Excel, oh, I'm going to tell Excel, okay, I want to continue this calculation. So I'm just going to do it for one cell to make sure that Excel is smart about it. Look what it did here. H4 to H10, meaning now it has taken these, where's H10? It has taken the next seven data point. And that's it. When I'm there, I double click on here, my friend. Here we are, we have our HR7. Literally, it was less than five, 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 five minutes, right? So uh, <laughs> let me just, I can then just decide to, to plot this. Nice and easy. So I can plot this here, insert, and I'm going to just go, uh, here we go. Here's my ATR over the last couple of years, literally, on this. So I can add the dates on here very quickly. Uh, so for those, <laughs> so edit. And my point start here generated 13. Why do we start at generated 13? Because my data point was starting the first day of, uh, of, of, of that, but I need to give it seven days at least to do that, those average. So this is it here, the, the variation of the ATR. So we can see that in some period on here in 2020, for early 2020, remember when the market was crashing? <laughs> it was crashing. Uh, you, you, we have the ATR going up a great deal, meaning that per day in average, QQQ will move by between the high and the low by $14 at, at the peak. But then it come down a little bit to $6. So here over time, you can see that the ATR here will be, it will be like four. Uh, if, if you want, can, what can we do here? Uh, for my, we, we, we can, uh, we can uh, just put an approximation on here on, on this. So a trend line is what I'm looking for. So if I want it a linear trend line, this is how I can add it. So I want it to, to give me a linear trend line. Of, it's not exponential, but they definitely I can just do, do that on, on here. So uh, this is this is the trend line for for, for, for that. So that, that that that's it. So now uh, that you have this, I'm going to uh, for my trend line. Maybe I want it to to be uh, bigger, uh, thicker, uh, re re ready, right? So uh, the width of it, so that you can fully see, and maybe the color of it. Uh, so that here you go. Here, here's the trend line. Your ATR. Uh, really. Uh, so um, that that's it. This is ATR7, and I can't tell this ATR7. Yeah. So the ATR is an average number. So we need to be mindful that a spike, spike like this one, will affect this a, a little bit. Yeah. So we explain that in in our document. So before I let you go, I want to just quickly, quickly do ATR14, uh, meaning now the average is going to be over 14 days. You guess it. We are going to have to feed this thing. 14 data points before we start. So where's my 14 data points here? Very quickly. Uh, so let's see. This is 14. So I can start right here. Okay. So equal average of those 14 days prior. Okay. Excel is smart enough, I believe, because if I just do the same here i drag it it now it goes from h3 to h16 whereas this one h2 to h15 so we're good perfect excellent we are done so now we have an atr14 an atr7 and i want to be able to compare them for you so because i want to give you that understanding the difference between the two because traders typically will ask me hey tell us what's the difference between uh, using which one should I use more more importantly right that, that that's what it is so here let's go to our chart and just add what's our chart on here so we have the current one is ATR7 so here I'm just going to say select data 
add another data series point to this one. We are going to call it ATR14, meaning the average over 14 days instead of 7 days. And let me feed it to the value here. Oops, let's go all the way to the end. So this is really from 2020. So two years of ATR tracking on Excel. This is what we are able to, 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 to do here today. So yeah, I, I'm not going to put the dates on, on here just uh, to save you some, 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 some time. So now, uh, this ATR again is a statistical number. So um, what you would like to do if you want to go to the next level, right? So I will invite you, let's see here. We want to put some, the legend, uh, Perfect. So let's let's put the legend on top so that you can see. And I, I will download this. Ex I will put this Excel spreadsheet in the in, in the in our blog so that you can download it and use it uh, 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 as a reference anytime that, that that you want. So this template you will have it as a, 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 a download. But the point that I wanted to make is that this is statistical. What is actually better? Uh, and if you want, I will make another video onto that, is to calculate the probability of the ATR. Because if I tell you that, oh, the ATR of QQQ is 4, okay, fine, or whatever, over the most recent, actually over the next, the most recent days here is like close to 7, because um, this, this is what has been going on, right? So, and then you can ask me, well, uh, let's see, if I average these numbers, we get what, 6.36. Well, but so what's the probability that actually that, that that's happening? Because on some days it's lower, on some days it's going to be higher. So calculating that probability gives you a further insight. I can do yeah, another video on how to get to calculate the ATR, not only calculate the ATR in itself, but calculate the probability of the ATR. So the higher the probability, the more uh, confidence you will have into that metric, which will help you in three ways, right? If you're a day trader, it helps you know uh, it's uh, the expected move each and every day such to, so that you can make a decision. Hey, um, should I hold into, in, in, into this uh, for more gains or uh, should this thing be retreating because it has moved more than the, the ATR? If you're an investor, we talk in the blog that you can use ATR uh, for stop loss, for trailing stop. We have a full documentation on how to use a trailing stop on E-Trade. We have a video on that as well that you can check out. I will make sure to post that video on here uh, 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 as well and last but not least if you are a option trader right how to calculate strike price strike price is at the center front and center of option trading so there is an easy way to use the atr to calculate a strike price hence you can get into beta trade and make more money that video again how to calculate um uh, the, the, the strike price using the ATR calculation that you did here on Excel, it's available on this blog. So check it out and we'll catch you on the next episode. Until then, have a great day, have a great evening, have a great afternoon wherever you're watching from and bye-bye.